Hello, and welcome back to Fireball! Okay, this time welcome back for real. I just got ambushed by some beast men, a whole horde of them, and thought that it would be fun to blast them with a fireball on the way over here. So here it is, the fire dungeon, or at least that's what I call it. However, uh, there's actually not much that's fiery about this dungeon, aside from the fact that it does have a lot of fire-themed enemies in it. And it's guarded by a red dragon here at the entrance. Now, obviously, I could just entangle this guy. But I'm actually going to kill him by kiting him instead, just for variety's sake, because... Sometimes I get tired of entangling every tough enemy I come across, and it's a little bit more exciting fighting him this way, because I could mess up and get hit in the face with a blast of fire breath or something. So it's a little more tense. Come on, dragon. You can do it. Frustrating, isn't it? All right, got him. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, despite the fact that it lies at the end of the volcanic region, there's actually not much about this dungeon that's fire-themed. Let me show you something really interesting. I can actually straight up take the fire rings off of a character now. So now Dimsdale no longer has his. Doesn't matter. Now that we're inside this dungeon, he doesn't get hurt by the lack of the... Alright, we picked up an anti-magic shell scroll. He doesn't get hurt by the lack of the fire ring or anything. And inherently, there's nothing particularly fiery about this dungeon. It doesn't have any fire hazards. Uh, it doesn't have a unique fire-themed tile set. All it's got, like I said, is some fire-themed enemies. And the official name of this place isn't Fire Dungeon or anything like that either. It's called something different. So despite the fact that it lies at the end of the fire bridge, it's kind of just an ordinary dungeon. Or at least, you know, it's not elemental themed. Man, this room is just filled with an entire colony of giant ants. And they do hit pretty hard, so Dimsdale is taking some hits here. Oh, look at that guy attacking me from behind. All right, go ahead and fix him up, Grelden, and I should get my buffs active while I'm at it. Might as well make use of that fancy new Cure Serious Wounds, and then I'll cast a Bless. Hey, he actually healed somebody up after full, after they took a significant amount of damage. You're improving, Grelden. I really give him a hard time about his healing abilities, don't I? Fire beetles, eh? So yeah, the dungeon does have that going for it, the fire-themed enemies. So it's not completely lacking in the fire elemental theme. But it does feel weird to me that you don't even have to wear the rings of fire resistance in here. But 
But not a big deal, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things. Troll, we fought some of these guys in a secret dungeon. They're pretty nasty. They are still tough enough to be a challenge to our party even now. Okay, Displacer Cloak is nice because that is the only piece of armor, quote unquote, that a magic user can wear. It's not especially great, but it's the best that Draven is ever going to get. And so looking at his stats now, we see he now has an armor class of 6. Not great by any standard whatsoever, but, you know, it's a little tiny bit better than it was. Oh, good grief, this place is... <laughs> like every dungeon in this game, it's kind of a confusing maze. Another of these rock statues. Why, why couldn't I back up there? Ah, because there was one in that direction as well. So a lot of enemies in this dungeon seem programmed to just hold their ground, which depending on their position does effectively eliminate the ability to kite them. Oh man, Grelden took a serious hit there. Might as well use up those Cure Serious Wound Scrolls, eh? Inventory space at always as always is at a premium. I think that goes to the next level, and I don't want to go down yet. There is treasure that I've missed here on the top floor. Finally, Lucia found a secret door. I'm starting to think that... Uh, okay, I accidentally went down after all. I didn't mean to do that. I really wish that they used a proper stair down graphic for that instead of just a door so that you couldn't accidentally switch floors like that. Uh, as I was about to say, I'm actually coming to the conclusion that characters have a lower chance of finding secret doors in this game than they do in the pen and paper game. Because uh, I think... I, I have to double check, but I think elves are supposed to have like a 2 and 6 chance. It doesn't seem anywhere near that high. Lots of enemies that just camp in here. Clearly is an anti-kiting tactic. But we have other ways of dealing with that. We are still perfectly capable of cheesing you, even if we can't kite you. That is, you could almost say, maybe a design flaw in older editions of D&D is the all the hard disable spells. Uh, they're known as save or die effects. And sometimes that's quite literally the case, where if you fail your saving throw against a particular effect, you just straight up die against it. 
It's actually kind of ridiculous if you read through the monster statistics of old BX monsters, just how many of them have effects that say something like save versus poison or die. Just tons of them. And there's a lot of spells that either kill you if you fail your save against them or they hit you with an effect so debilitating that they effectively kill you. And that's not really very good design, is it? Where just the fate of a single die roll can determine whether you live or die. I mean, it's one thing if you have a hard-fought battle and you're down to just a few hit points, and then whether a particular attack hitting or missing determines, you know, whether you get taken out or not. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where... Like, regardless of your hit points, regardless of how long a fight has been going on, maybe it's just that you happen to step into the wrong room in a dungeon or something, all of a sudden you have to make a save, and if you fail it, bam, you're dead. That really doesn't feel like good design to me. Because it's just a... It's basically just a screw you button, right? It's like, oops, you went to the wrong place and got unlucky, you're dead. Grognards will fight to the death to defend that kind of design, saying that it is, you know, fantastic. Because the game is deadlier and, like, it's a real man's man's game when you can just get killed out of nowhere at the drop of a hat. and It's properly threatening. And I mean, if you enjoy playing that way, it's fine. I'm not telling you not to enjoy it, but... It's not the way I like to play. I'm perfectly happy with the threat of character death. I have occasionally killed characters as a dungeon master. Not super often, but now and then. Uh, I've had a couple of characters die as a player. I don't have a problem with that, but I certainly prefer when it doesn't just screw you over out of nowhere. Let's prepare some fireballs for this massive swarm of gargoyles. Come on, guys. Any more? Okay, a couple of potions of cure poison. Nothing too exciting about that. I still haven't found the treasure that I really want in here. Nice try. Okay, can we rest now? Nope. To be clear, um, there aren't much in the way of, if any, savor die effects against the player in Warriors of the Eternal Sun. Uh, like, as you can see, poison never instantly kills us. It's just damage over time. More of a standard RPG mechanic, the way it's implemented here. So they didn't necessarily strictly follow BX rules there, and that's one area where I think it's an improvement. Okay, this is what I was looking for. This is the good treasure on this floor. So what we got, we have a plus one sword. We don't care about that. Honestly, money is useless to us now, so it's not even worth holding onto it to sell it. So I might drop it if inventory space becomes a problem. We got a scroll of lightning bolt, which is not a big deal when we already have fireball. Lightning bolt isn't really better than fireball or anything. 
But more importantly, we got a scroll of Ice Storm. And that is a fourth level damaging AoE, much like Fireball, except it's a higher tier of magic. And since it goes in a different slot, it gives us that many more powerful AoEs that we can cast. So it's excellent, and I definitely want to scribe it immediately. So Lucia gets the Lightning Bolt, Draven gets the Ice Storm, exactly as I wanted. And let's change up our spell lists. Just for variety, I'm going to give Lucia one Lightning Bolt and one Fireball. I am going to want to be very careful about casting the Lightning Bolt indoors because it bounces off walls. So you can get yourself killed if you're careless. And Draven, of course, is going to want to memorize that Ice Storm. And I'll be looking out for opportunities to show that off. I think one difference between Ice Storm and other spells indoors is that indoors, I think Ice Storm penetrates, which can be very useful if you have a whole bunch of enemies in a big chain that you can hit with it like that. Lightning Bolt also penetrates, of course, but it penetrates and bounces, so it's dangerous. As for the damage, I couldn't find Ice Storm in the spell list of Old School Essentials, the BX D&D clone that I've been using as a reference for the official rules. I also have the actual rules cyclopedia, which covered basic expert uh, companion master and a little bit of the immortals rules, although not the whole thing. Uh, I don't have that in PDF form, though. I just have that in actual physical book form. I'll check that to see if Ice Storm exists as a spell in that book, because I want to know what its damage formulas are compared to Fireball and Lightning Bolt, both of which are 1d6 damage per caster level. And I'm curious how Ice Storm compares, so I'll try to find a source that actually has that information. Old School Essentials apparently does not. Right, the respawning enemies. This might be a good opportunity to use Ice Storm, though, just to show it off. It is supposed to be very effective against fire enemies. Just gonna chill out there, guys. Well, so much for them. Okay, is this the right way? Such a labyrinth. It is fun just throwing fiery death around like that. Oh, such devastation. Okay, I think this is the path down. Uh, I would like to get my spells back before I descend. Oh, it's a rock statue. Let's kill him. <laughs> Holding your ground worked against you there, didn't it, pal? All right, let us descend to level two and see what other horrors await us in this fire dungeon that's not all that fiery. At least unlike the Azcan Pyramid, this is not a trap-filled death pit. It's a monster-filled death pit, which is 
easier to deal with when you don't have a thief in your party. I had of course remembered that the Azkan Pyramid is a labyrinthine maze of death traps, because anybody who's played this game remembers that. But I had honestly underestimated slash forgotten the extent to which I would be punished for not having a thief in there. Okay, a bunch of healing potions which are honestly just going to waste my very limited inventory space, so I'm going to drop them. And aside from that, the other big benefit of a thief is their hide ability, which can be very exploitative. And I don't like using exploits generally. So while that particular aspect of the thief is very strong, because it is some combination of overpowered and poorly implemented, that is not an aspect of the thief that I like to use. And as a result, the big reason to have a thief in your party... Okay, we find gold hidden under some rotting skins, and did that just say that I picked up a death spell scroll? It did. I had forgotten that it's actually possible to pick up a death spell scroll uh, as loot. Which means I'm not going to have to hex edit it in, and that's great because that saves me some time and effort. Uh, so I'll keep that. Um, this plus one sword's useless, because as I said, we're not going to be able to sell it. More healing potions, which aren't useless, but our inventory space is too limited. So I'm going to ditch those. So yeah, uh, if you don't intend to use the Thief Hide exploits, then the Azkan Pyramid is the big argument in favor of having a thief in your party. And I got punished for that. I had forgotten slash, under, slash underestimated just how brutal the Azkan Pyramid would be without a thief. Of course, if you have the pyramid memorized or you use a map, then you can just avoid most of the traps and it's a non-issue. But if you don't have it memorized and you're navigating it without the benefit of looking at a map, then the traps are just out of control in that place. Utterly ridiculous. For that reason, absent a thief, I think that is probably the hardest dungeon in the game. This one is potentially challenging by virtue of having a lot of strong monsters in it. But my party should pretty much be able to handle them. And the extra firepower from all the spells and fighting ability that you get from having an elf in your party instead of a thief is very strong. So outside of the Azkan Pyramid, there is a lot of upside to going with an elf in your party as I chose to do. Alright, if there's a bunch of undead here, we know what to do about that, don't we, Grelden? Turn undead. Oh, that is so powerful. I love it. Um, again, I wish they marked them with proper stair graphics, but I think that this might actually be the way down to the uh, third floor, and we definitely haven't finished exploring this floor yet. So, we're going to turn back. Also, we're going to prepare some of our most powerful magic, because I think there are some really strong enemies awaiting us that we haven't encountered yet on this floor. 
Oh, giant scorpions definitely qualify. Especially when there's a group of four of them. Okay, I need a turn. I need a turn. I need a turn. Uh, the way that all input is frozen while the enemy attacks and you don't know how long the enemy's turn is going to take can actually be pretty um, annoying or problematic because it can cause you to miss inputs, which it did there. I wanted to throw another fireball, but um, I accidentally went over Draven. Okay, that was really dangerous. Okay, some potions of cure poison to, in the room with the giant scorpions. Convenient in case they had succeeded in poisoning any of us. However, I have a feeling we may end up dropping those to make room for more treasure caches. I think this room here is just more giant scorpions with no reward, so we're going to steer clear of it. Okay, giant rats, that's no threat. That's just target practice. And this is the entry room, I believe. Yes, I think that goes back to the previous floor. Trolls, let's prepare a fireball for these gentlemen. And a nice storm too while we're at it, because they're pretty hardy. I would like a turn, please. I would greatly like a turn. Okay, I'm backing off because Dimsdale's almost dead. Do I have any healing left? If I can't rest, I may be backtracking for those potions of healing after all, if I can remember where I dropped them. Okay, those trolls were extremely strong. A moment while I see if I can remember where I dropped those potions. Those potions were not nearly adequate to get Dimsdale healed, so we're going to hope that we can rest. Good, good, we can. Mm, I think I need that extra fireball. It's just too dangerous to cast Lightning Bolt in here, and it's so dangerous in here that even my powerful party really shouldn't be holding anything back at all. All right, let's go get some revenge on those trolls. I'm not going to let that uh, that beating go unpunished. I really, really want to avoid getting any characters killed at this point because of the inconvenience of getting them raised. Nope, so much for them. That's what you get. Okay, there are 800 gold pieces hidden in this alcove, a plus two sword. A Cure Light Wounds. I think it's time to 
be really... I think it's time to be incredibly exacting about what we keep in our inventory because we're just so desperately low on space. Okay, so scrolls of spells we haven't seen before we're going to keep because we might become high enough level to scribe them and even if we don't, I want to at least be able to cast them once to show what they look like. So those will stay. I think basically any potion has to go at this point. We just don't have room for consumables. We just don't. Um, Cure Light Wounds is effectively a potion as far as we're concerned, so that is going to get dropped. I'm going to hang on to the Withered Vine because uh, that might become the most expeditious way to get characters raised if things go really south. Um, I guess I'll hang on to the Wand of Lightning. I don't need this extra plus two sword. Obviously, if money meant anything, I'd hang on to it to sell it because it should be worth a lot, but money is meaningless now. Okay, that freed up a bit of space. And I think we've explored almost this entire floor. Um, one of the rooms that we missed is just a bunch of giant scorpions, so we want nothing to do with it. I don't think we missed any treasure, so let's prepare to move on to the next floor. And if memory serves, there are level draining undead on the next floor. So I want to be ready to deal with them with extreme prejudice. So fireballs and turn undead are ready to go. Here we go. There they are. Okay, good. We got the drop on them, took them out before they could hit and attempt to level drain anyone. All right, Spectre. I think a Spectre is undead, actually. But maybe it was too powerful for Grelden to turn it. That's entirely possible. The Spectre had over 1,500 gold pieces. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Bunch of stuff here. Um, let's take inventory of what we just got. So we picked up a plus one shield, which is worthless. A suit of plus one plate mail, which is not worthless, because I think if we give that to Grelden, that should improve his armor class. Right now his armor class with the plus two chain is zero. If we give him this plus one plate mail, his armor class becomes minus one. So it's a slight improvement, but any improvement is welcome, which means we will drop the plus two chain. And what else did we get? A confusion scroll, so now uh, Draven can know that spell too, though he's likely to never cast it in favor of Ice Storm. And an extra Dispel Magic. Can we rest so that we can scribe those? That would be nice. No, monsters are near, so we'll have to wait for the opportunity to do that. Oh god, more lights. Okay, good. I think we killed them before they level drained anybody. Shadow, get it. Whew. Someone's blocking the door, huh? Let's try a different route then. More whites. Luckily, they don't seem to have a good attack bonus. That's one saving grace. Ugh, terrifying. I think they haven't managed to land any hits on anyone yet, though. Great. 
Wraiths. Oh, those are low enough level to be turned, apparently. The Wraiths had over a thousand gold pieces. Oh wow, look at all that stuff. Uh, we don't care about the potions. As I said, our inventory space is officially too limited to bother with consumables anymore. <laughs> uh, what is supposed to be a deadly, terrifying dungeon of horrors is just turning into inventory management, the RPG. Ditch the potions. Plus two mace is not going to be better than the plus two warhammer. So, leave it. Okay. Good thing I've got a hair trigger on that turn undead with all these jerks around. Okay, now I remember the first time I played this game as a kid. It took me forever to find where you need to go here. Because you reach this level and it's and you explore it all, and it seems like it's just a dead end. And at that point, it, it's really confusing. Like, I explored everything, and yet I didn't find anything to progress the story. What did I miss? And what I did, what you end up having to do, if you don't have a map to reference, is you just run around bonking your head against all the walls, desperately looking for secret doors. And as it turns out, there's a lot of secret doors in this place. I went through a few of them. And there's one specific secret door that leads to the event that will advance the story. And it's right here. You meet an Oltec merchant who offers to help your people in exchange for your opening this new trade route. She hands you a note for your duke. You have completed the duke's quest and we also get a medallion. So there's the medallion that actually takes up an inventory slot. I wonder if you can actually hard lock yourself out of finishing the game by dropping this. I've never tested that. It's an interesting thought. And I don't think that the note for the Duke actually takes up an inventory slot. I think that's strictly a story event item. Okay, so let's take a moment to talk about what just happened because man, that went by fast. So this is huge. This is momentous. We've spent the entire game trying to find allies and everybody that we find just wants to kill us. So the quest has just met with failure after failure after failure. And yet here in the unlikeliest of places, at the bottom of this death pit dungeon, we finally encounter somebody who, from out of nowhere, uh, wants to open up a trade agreement with us. And so, very abruptly, we have completed the quest that we've spent literally the entire game trying to accomplish. So that's huge. However, uh, to me, this is probably the most nonsensical part of the game. I don't know if maybe the developers intended to flesh this out some more. Maybe have an entire third area, like the swamp and the jungle. Maybe there would be another area that the Oltex inhabit and you would explore it and then, you know, find the Oltex and they would agree to trade with you. And maybe they just had to cut that due to time. I'm purely speculating. Maybe it was just going to be exactly as it is here all along. I have no idea. Regardless of whether it was meant to be like this or not, this makes no sense whatsoever. What is this Oltec merchant doing behind a secret door in a closet at the bottom level of this death dungeon at the end of a volcanic fire bridge that you need magical protection to even survive? Where did she come from? What is she doing here? It says this is a trade route, and that is the official name of this dungeon that I call the Fire Dungeon. It's actually the Oltec Tradeway. What tradeway? It's just a maze full of deadly monsters. A dead-end maze full of deadly monsters. How is this a tradeway? Nothing about this makes any sense at all. It. 
I don't know. This is one of the places where the limitations of the game's storytelling and and terse cutscenes show their rear their head the most. Um, I suppose there are ways that you could interpret this to try to make it make more sense, uh, but let's. I guess let's just put all that to the side. Let's just accept it at face value. We opened a tradeway somehow. And we met a merchant who, even though she just laid eyes on us out of nowhere, I, I guess maybe we can assume we explained who we were, uh, who we represented, and that we had just cleared all the monsters out of this. Maybe all that happened and, you know, the game just kind of glosses it over. And so we successfully negotiated a trade deal and now we have allies. Let's just assume that's the case and that a lot of things are just being glossed over. So huzzah! That being the case, and I'm done complaining now, let us return to the Duke in triumph, having completed our quest, fulfilled our charter at long, long last. Assuming that he hasn't gone completely mad, he should be absolutely delighted to learn of our success. Maybe we will finally be hailed as the heroes that we deserve to be. If I can remember the way out of here and not get brutally murdered. Oh, I almost forgot about these guys. Not the skeletons can level drain. Wow, Grelden. That was incredible. Also, never mind the fact that monsters respawn in this engine, so we haven't actually cleared out anything. Just chalk that up to the limitations of 1990s video game storytelling and don't worry about it too much. Oh my god. Die, trolls. Uh, I skipped over Draven. Give me a turn, give me a turn. And there is Ice Storm's penetration in action. Without, unlike Lightning Bolt, bouncing back and hitting us in the face. I really should remember to put my buff on. It does help. Holy word. I've been gimping myself doing most of this dungeon without that active. Okay, fire beetles, no real threat. I already beat this guy the honest way on the way in, so this time I'm just going to cheese him. Hey, dragon. I have an entangle in the face. We should be able to rest now. Oh, jeez. I forgot that to prove a point, I had taken the Ring of Fire resistance off of Dipsdale. Oh, goodness. Let's, uh, let's fix that.
Okay. Well, let us begin our journey back to the town to report our triumph. But yes, our heroes, as they are on their way back to the town, a mixture of feelings. On the one hand, relief at having finally completed our quest and found allies. We are hopeful that this will alleviate our people's problems. Perhaps there will be a great celebration in our honor and we will be hailed as heroes. But at the same time, a sense of dread because we know that madness has been taking our people, but we don't know why. And since we don't know the reason, we have no reason to think that we've done anything to alleviate the madness. What is its source? Are our people doomed to just go ever more insane until it causes the collapse of our little transplanted civilization. Oh wow, I, uh, I went too far to the south, didn't realize I had missed in that direction. Furthermore, other questions. Why are we still sane? Or are we still sane? Even if we had been going insane, would we even know? What about Marmillion? Although his grip on sanity is starting to seem a little tenuous as well, he's nonetheless done a better job of hanging on to his sanity than anybody else. Mysterious and very concerning. What are the reasons for all of this? Do these Oltex, who we now have a trade agreement with, know anything about any of this? Maybe if they send a delegation, we'll be able to get more information and some help. Only, the town has been destroyed. We're too late. Our civilization has fallen. All of our efforts were for nothing. Nothing. 